What's up you guys? My name's Alex J. Fisher. Welcome back to another adventure vlog. Ugh. Here, take it, take it, take it! <laughs> okay, we're good. All right, you guys, so we got back from the two weeks in South Dakota, and I went to check on my terrarium here, and I just noticed something crazy. So you'll see it's pretty green inside. There's a lot of condensation, but there is an insect in there. It looks like a big mosquito. I don't know if it's a mosquito hawk or what it is, but how in the world did that get in there? Because when I was making it, like you guys saw me make it, there's no way this insect could have gotten in at the state that it's currently in, which is just a big bug. So, I have no idea what's going on. Hopefully I can get an explanation for you guys if there were eggs in the soil or what. But that is crazy. That's what I was talking about with the terrarium, that you never know what's inside because there's a whole little ecosystem in there. So after doing a bit of research, I think we can confirm that this little guy we have here is indeed a mosquito hawk. They are also known as well, formerly known as crane flies, because that is their actual name. Mosquito hawk is just a nickname, also known as mosquito eaters. But in fact, contrary to large belief, these guys don't actually eat mosquitoes. They aren't a predator to mosquitoes at all. They do eat little bugs uh, when they're in their larval stage. They live in the soil and they eat roots of plants and plant matter. And I'm thinking what happened is I scooped up the dirt. I mean, I like to think that I'm a pretty observant person. I looked through the dirt and stuff, really didn't see anything. But like I was telling you guys, there are so many little organisms in these little ecospheres. And I'm guessing that there was either a larva, which are known as leather jackets because they're these tough skin little worm looking things, or more likely a pupa, which has the little larva inside turning into one of these crane flies and when I left for South Dakota it was in the soil and then it hatched and it has been living in here drinking up Oh, I see another bug as well. That's pretty cool. Yeah, he was probably drinking the water, eating some plant matter, little bugs, whatever. But these guys, as soon as they hatch, their goal is to go out and mate. There are a few species like this guy who hatch in the winter, which is a bit weird. You usually see them coming out in spring. But we'll get this guy outside so that he can go do his little duty as a crane fly. And we'll lock this guy back up and continue observing it. So now I've got that crane fly out of the little terrarium. You can see it's definitely a pretty large insect. It's got a pretty large leg span, but unfortunately it's got some water droplets on its wings yet from all the condensation in there, so we'll wait for those to dry off. And then it should be good to go. We'll get him outside. It looks to be a male from what I can see. So we're going to be doing another terrarium today, and I went out and collected all the stuff. Just different plants, cool little things here and there. And it'll be a bit larger of a setup this time because I picked up a nice watertight, airtight jar that we'll be using for the terrarium instead of an ornament this time. And we're going to add in some insects as well. Insects play a vital role in the ecosystem. So let's get this thing put together. We're gonna start out by just rinsing out the jar of anything that may be inside of it. Go ahead and dry it out because we don't want too much excess water. We also don't want a slippery jar. Alright, so next up we're going to be pouring in the gravel and we're going to be putting our terrarium on its side this time. Like this and we'll be filling it up to about right here. Toss some of that Texas gravel in there. And then on top of that is we're going to be putting in a layer of mesh just to separate the gravel from the soil and it will help to keep the soil and the gravel from mixing long term which will create rot and then it will make the whole thing stagnant and nasty and you don't want that. So on top of the mesh layer that we've got in there we're going to pop some of this Texas soil in there. And you know last time when I had made that terrarium I had this 
plain soil in there and out of nowhere I come back from vacation and there's a fully grown crane fly in there so who knows what'll come out of this one. See there are some snail shells in there. We have a lot of snails around Texas. Also found a lot of fossilized snail shells from back when Texas was underwater. Under the ocean. Alright, I think we've got enough soil. I'm just going to clean off the glass because it's going to get difficult once there are plants in there. And then next we are going to add in some of our plants. And I figured for the centerpiece we would use this guy. Looks like a bunch of little palm trees. So add in the plants that go towards the back first. Once again I managed to pick out way more plants than I need. So I will be replanting those guys once it comes time. I picked out some of this carpeting moss stuff around outside of my house. centerpiece plant. Hopefully it's not too tall. And it really looks like a jungle in there. He's a funny little guy. Hopefully that's not a tree that I picked up. But we'll pop him in for now. If he gets too big we can always put him in a more rightful home outside. Some little snail shells. clovers. With time these guys will spread themselves out naturally because there's not much for teeny tiny plants in here but I've noticed in my other terrarium I've already seen some sprouts popping up. Oh, we'll put the guys that we didn't use back inside our bag here and we will return them to the outdoors. And now we'll introduce the new residents into their homes. They're getting anxious to get out of this little enclosure. So first we will introduce the beetle because he's the most energetic. And then next the millipede, which is a friendly little guy. It'll be cool just to see over time what roles they play in the ecosystem. And this is a live snail here. The other one is just an empty shell. So we'll pop both of them in. And then we have got three earwigs, the earwig trio. Here's one. They're pretty young still. You always see these guys hanging out under rocks. They're all going right on in. And next we have a leather jacket, which is the larval form of a cream fly, like that was in my other terrarium. Oops. Oh, what is he doing? Every time I grab him, he curls around my finger and it freaks me out. <laughs> oh, you stay in there, you naughty boy. He's trying to get out. And I'll probably have to remove him once he pupates because it'll be a big old fly. And then a teeny tiny little slug. Here he is. We'll just pop him in there. Oh, there's another earwig. Apparently we have four earwigs. And then a whole bunch of roly-polies. And there, we'll just go ahead and dump them out into my hand. It'll take forever to grab them. There they go. Alrighty guys, so we will observe that terrarium over the coming weeks, months, years, depends on how successful it is. But we might splash a bit of water in there. I noticed the last time I put apparently way too much water in there. But yeah, it's looking pretty cool so far. So hopefully it will do well. So the weirdest and creepiest thing just happened, this little acorn here got caught up in my soil that I was digging, so I cracked it open. To see if there was a seed inside, and a whole ton of ants were filling it up. I was not expecting that at all, so it freaks me out a bit. But they must be eating the contents of it. But yeah, the reason I took it out is because you don't want too many seeds especially for something like a tree in your soil because it will end up growing inside of the terrarium but isn't that the craziest thing as i'm picking up these plants you know it's really amazing how some of these plants can manage to grow where they do this is out of solid stone right here and the seed just managed to find its way into a teeny little hole and found some sort of sustenance to keep it going pretty crazy what mother nature can do
Alright you guys, so Owen was out fishing that night and he called me and said he's caught a fish, so we'll see. What it, oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> that is a huge fish. That is the biggest bass I've ever seen in here. How did you... How did you... Oh my gosh! That is a monster! How on earth did you catch that? Look at the size of that! Oh my god, there's a thumb comparison. That is a monster. I didn't know a fish that big was in here. That is crazy. Okay, boom. It's so floppy. Here. Yeah. That is crazy. Nice job. That's as big as my leg. You want a shot with it? Sure. There you go. Look at him go. He's a monster. Holy moly. Nice job, Owen. High five. All right, you guys, so got to move quick. I got a special delivery in the mail today, and it is alive. I told you guys I wanted to put something in this aquarium, so we're going to pop the corridors out real quick, uh, get them acclimated to this tank, then open the package right there, and we'll see what's inside. tank set up. Um, I don't want to spend too much time making it look nice and pretty. Obviously I will add some more stuff because the species that I've got is very inquisitive and likes adventure. Just like me. I've got to add some salt as well. This is uh, natural sea salt and iodized. You can get this stuff from the pet store or I found that this stuff works just as well. You don't want any iodine in it. You gotta have it uh, natural sea salt. I'm just gonna add a little bit. This species is freshwater and brackish water so a little bit of salt will do it some good. Just don't want too much. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and unbox it. This poor little guy has been sent through the mail on an airplane and it's been about 20 hours since it was shipped so it will be eager to get out. Here is some information. Do not release. That's how a lot of invasive species happen. I know in Florida they got a big problem with that. This is a heat pack because it has been cold. It's still warm. That's good. Well, I don't see the fish yet. Oh, I see him. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. Well, the fish is down there. You can see that little brown spot right there. It's alive for sure. So we're gonna go ahead and get it popped into the aquarium to acclimate. Been researching the species for quite a while, so it's really cool to see it firsthand. Oh, I'm flustered. Got home from school and I had to move quick. I don't like this poor little dude sitting in here for too long because it is not easy. You know, you don't want him to run out of oxygen. Uh, I'm turned all red. <laughs> but one cool thing is I wanted to tell you guys about, so you know how my lighting on my aquarium was out, so I had to use this little Pixar hobby lamp thing to light my aquarium. And I was looking online at the type of aquarium that I got and there was just no replacements that you could buy for the hood so I was thinking about getting this LED bar that you put on the inside of your hood you like suck and cup it in but I emailed the company to ask them about hey is there any replacements for this before I go ahead and buy this tube and they said no unfortunately not and yeah that was the end of it so I just kind of forgot about it and then the other day I woke up and Owen walks in with a package and says did you order something for your aquarium and I said no and I opened it up and the company was nice enough to send me a brand new hood so we'll pop that on it'll make a nice addition to the aquarium it'll really light it up and make it look pretty again so Looking pretty murky right now and that's just because I stirred things up quite a bit getting those Cory's out. Those babies sure are fast. Holy cow. They shoot around like a little race car. Look at that. Nice, pristine. Look at that. So, what do you say we go ahead and release our new friend into his or her home? Oh my goodness, I'm dripping. Oops. Sorry about that. So, we'll let the fish come out on its own terms. And there it is. Look at that. So this is a figure eight puffer fish. <laughs> Look at that, oh my gosh, it's so cute. 
<laughs> oh, look at that. That is the cutest fish I've ever seen. <laughs> wow. Now these guys have some great eyesight and in turn, that makes them very fun little pets. They act like puppies because they can recognize you, they can see you coming from across the room and they just have a gorgeous pattern on them. Look at that. I'm gonna get the hood put on that we'll take a closer look at them. The anal fin and the dorsal fin up there. Just moving a million miles an hour. But the reason they're called figure eights is you can see on top that they've got a figure eight right there. Look at him showing it off. Hello. But these guys tend to be semi-aggressive and you don't want them in with other fish, especially ones with flamboyant fins, otherwise they will get bitten. The cool thing about these guys is if you have a snail infestation, which in my other tank I do happen to have a snail infestation, it's not that bad. It's a type of pond snail. Sometimes you'll find them on plants, but uh, these guys actually eat pond snails. They've got a beak that is constantly growing, much like the teeth of rodents. I know when I had hamsters I always had to give them little pieces of wood to chew on and little toys and whatnot to keep their teeth down. Otherwise they would get their teeth too long. Oh, you can see his beak right there. Otherwise their teeth would get too long and it would injure them because their teeth would come around and poke themselves in the mouth. So the equivalent of the piece of wood that the rodents would chew on is a shell. So larger versions of these guys, like Mabu puffers, I know are pretty big. They'll eat clam shells and they'll just bust them open and it's crazy how strong their beaks are. But because these guys are smaller, you know, you're gonna wanna stick to snails, uh, the pond snails. I know I've got a few in this aquarium, like that one right there. And I don't know how long he'll last. Once this guy gets comfortable, he'll probably start eating. But yeah, you want to feed them something that'll grind down their teeth, otherwise you have to file them down yourself, and that's not a very easy thing to do. But these guys are kind of picky when it comes to eating. They like to eat live foods for the most part, and in many cases they'll also eat once live foods, like frozen blood worms. I have a lot of those. I'll feed them to my pets quite often. But the blood worms don't grind down their teeth like the snails do, so you gotta make sure to incorporate some sort of hard snack for them. So unfortunately, this guy probably won't be eating any flakes, so I gotta put a bit more work into his diet, but I really don't mind, because he is a cool little dude. <laughs> All right guys, so I just squatted down here and I heard something next to me and I looked down. I'm glad I did, because there's a snake right there. He is hard to see, because he's so camouflaged. Oh, there's his head. I can see his tongue flickering around. We can try and lure him out here a little bit, but don't want to get too close because I don't exactly know what type of snake it is. We do have cottonmouth rattlesnakes here, and then we also have water snakes. So. Looks like he's got a yellow belly on him. There he goes. If we can get him into the water, I can tell what type of snake it is. He's looking at me now. So I'm gonna respect his wishes and stay back. Grab this stick. I'm pretty sure it's just a water snake though. Yeah, it is. It's a water snake. He did go into the water which with water snakes they swim under the water with water moccasins you can usually see them on top of the water so this guy just descended into the depths i noticed my shoulder here i'm covered in seeds <laughs> but that's what seeds do they stick to you so that animals will transport them on their fur to other locations and they can spread the population but yeah i'm gonna keep looking around and see what else i can find So I went over to this wooded area and I flipped over this log and you can see here, there's a skink sitting there. And it's pretty cold out so he's probably not going to be too mobile. Get a bit of a closer look. It's okay. You are very sleepy. So there's Mr. Skink. You can definitely tell they're a lot more slowed down than they usually are with the cold weather. Usually they're jumping out of my hands the second I grab them. 
if I can even grab them most of the time. They're so fast. Well, that pretty much sums up Texas for you. So I flipped this log here, and if you have arachnophobia, look away now. Because this is one of the biggest spiders I've ever seen. You guys see it yet? There he is. <laughs> Might be a wolf spider or something like that. We'll go ahead and try and coax him out. He's looking pretty slow. Ooh, look at that. He's got an orange stripe on his face. Got a very large leg span. Look at that. It's quite a pretty spider. I'd like to get him to come up here and see us. Don't want his buddy who's probably hiding around here somewhere to hop out onto my hand. Well, I think that's all we're gonna get of him. Cool little find. Flipped over this log and there were quite a few of these guys, but I wasn't fast enough. Here's a cockroach. A lot of these guys around here, but they are super fast. See if we can't uncover some of his buddies though. There it is, Ooh, right next to that cockroach. <laughs> Garden snail. Ooh, there goes the cockroach again, oh my gosh. Always when I pan the camera away. But, cool little find, let's keep moving. That looks like a den of some sort. All right, you guys, so I've decided on a name for the figure eight pufferfish. He will now be called Doby. So yeah, this is Doby. We've got a few little snails as a snack for him here. He's been getting much more eager to eat lately. So there go the snails and there goes Doby. What's a happy puffer fish? One more coming down if he spots it. Yep, there he goes. Oh, such good eyesight. That's why you never see glasses for puffer fish. Aren't you happy now? Yes. <laughs> From owning a puffer fish in the few days that I've had him, you definitely notice how smart they are. It's not like owning most fish. So I'm gonna show you one of Dobby's tricks. I've got a laser pointer here. And if I just point it into the water, look at that. He's got such good eyesight that he'll actually follow it around. <laughs> chasing it. So it's kind of like playing with a cat. It's pretty funny. <laughs> and he, he'll see it hitting the glass and also on the sand. So that's where he's going. Up and then down. Well, you guys, Dobie and I hope you enjoyed this adventure vlog, and thanks for watching, and ta-ta!